Okay, so if we take and bring in the two images, the two still images I took out of the PBS uh, special there, bring them in here, um, and we take and tint one of them. This is the two images I brought in. One had a helicopter and one didn't. We were watching the helicopter go below the below the water line there in this sequence. And in both sequences we saw these birds flying by. So I tinted this one green so they're a little bit different and I'll take and overlay this one on that one. And then we play with the opacity a bit. Can you see what's going on here? You've got the three birds and you've got the same features in the water at that moment in time. Okay. The only thing changing is the helicopter. How could that be? There's the time sequence changing, right? Right? So all I did was that. How is that possible? It's because it's photoshopped. It's obvious video manipulation. They're calling this science. They, they're they're saying that they landed this helicopter six miles across on the other shoreline and it disappeared below the waterline due to the curvature of the earth and the curvature of the lake. And this is and this is the evidence that they showed you, him looking through that telescope. But how is it possible that uh, these same three birds are visible at two different times? One with a helicopter there and one with it out. Without it there. Uh, it's pretty obvious that this is just video manipulation and pseudoscience. This isn't... If this was so easy to demonstrate the curvature of the Earth, why would they have to fake this? I mean, it's, it's obvious that this has just totally been faked. On PBS, nonetheless. You know, millions of people watch this worldwide, and this is this is passed off as science. This is scientific proof that the curvature of the Earth exists, and they went out to a lake and measured it. How is it possible? Look at that. Right? There it is. Clear as mud. We're flying to Pyramid Rock. Do you copy that? I copy that. You are flying to the pyramid. The lake looks completely flat from up here. The lake looks flat because it is flat. If they are twice as far away as before, how much lower will the far shore of the lake appear to be? Jim, we're going to be at the top of the pyramid rock. Oh, got him. Yeah, I have you on the telescope. Go ahead and land. All right, notice those birds flying across there? Now let's just inch ahead right there. We got three birds and the helicopter just went below the water line. And let's just take a screen capture right here. Uh, let's see, what about here? Okay. And resume. As it lands, it completely disappears from my line of sight. Joey, are you still airborne? Yeah. Can you see us landing? The reports from the helicopter, they're still flying. But I can't see it. To wrap your head around it in that short time it was a little difficult for me. I was like, this is crazy. We have landed in opposition. Okay, Joey, go ahead and lift off. They plan to ascend until Jim can see them on the horizon. Then they'll tell him their altitude. Let me know when you can see us 
see some birds and let's just inch forward a couple for oh back one frame there see that now let's take another screen capture right about here right about there. okay resume I got him I got him get with your elevation right now all right Brian how many feet are we about the lake Twenty-four feet. Woo! We made it! Twenty-four feet. Twenty-four feet. Awesome. Twenty-four feet is a lot higher than our other two points that we got. That was awesome. That was great. At six miles, the lake has fallen four times lower than before. So what is going on? Okay, you guys, check this out. So if this line is our laser beam, right? That we shot across the lake, right? And that's the shore. This is the laser, right there. And we join our data points at six feet, and then all the way out to twenty-four. This is our source. That's our flat line, right? And this is the surface of the lake. The green line shows the path of the laser and the view from the telescope. And the gold line shows how the data points form the beginning of the curve. So that means this lake isn't flat. It's not even close. No. It's crazy. If we can just continue that curvature all the way around, complete a circle, and we can measure it, then that gives us the circumference of the Earth. With these measurements on the lake, we can calculate that the Earth's circumference is around 25,000 miles, which matches Eratosthenes' calculation. I still have a hard time wrapping my head around the fact that we measure the Earth at that lake. I'll never look at a lake the same way. I'll never look at a big body of water the same way now that I know it's following the curvature of the earth. Brainwashing on public television. <laughs>